Well, welcome once again to a Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heidkem, and I'm very, very uh, excited to be with you today as we take a look uh, at another chapter of the book by Jerry Bridges uh, called The Discipline of Grace. We are in chapter 8 uh, today, and um, today he begins this chapter called Dependent Discipline. Uh, by uh, pointing us towards Psalm 127 and chapter 1. On Psalm 127, chapter 1, we read these words, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. It's really a great passage, one that um, I have come back to time and time and time again, as a pastor, as a leader in the church, um, because one of the things that we have to recognize as we try to lead a church, as we try to lead um, a congregation of people, is that, listen, there's a lot of things that we are called to do as pastors. There's a lot of things that we are called to do as leaders in the church. There are a lot of things that we are called to do as uh, members of the body of Christ. Yet at the same time, if we're doing all of those things and God is not the one who is motivating those things, God is not the one who is enabling us to do those things. If we're relying on our own power, our own motivation, our own reasons, selfish desires, um, then we labor in vain. There's no reason for us to even do that work because the Lord isn't in it. And so today we're going to talk about this dependent discipline. Um, Bridges uses the metaphor of, or the uh, illustration of a, uh, an airplane. With two wings, of course, because without one wing, how would an airplane fly? It couldn't. There's no such thing as a one-winged airplane. And so you have two wings on an airplane, and one of those wings is discipline, and one of those wings is dependence. And he suggests, just like a plane can't fly without both wings, we can't serve God faithfully without both dependence and discipline in our life. And so I want to talk a little bit about what that means. Uh, so dependence, meaning that we would rely solely on God. Complete and utter dependence upon God means we rely on Him 100% for everything. Um, discipline, of course, would refer to the fact that we understand that we have something to do with whatever it is we're trying to do. We have some work to do. We have some responsibility. Uh, yes, the Lord provides for us. Uh, the Lord uh, enables us, equips us, but we, we have work to do. Now you can see the problem with either end of the spectrum with either one of these things. If we go too far with uh, discipline, we get into something we would call self-righteousness or works righteousness. I'm capable, I'm able, and it isn't God who is making me able. Uh, if we go too far down the road of dependency, then we lose the idea that I'm, I, I'm, I'm called with any responsibility. I'm called to do anything, and it's merely God needs to work, and so we might as well just sit back, do nothing, let God do his thing, and uh, pray for the best, I guess. Um, obviously, we can't go too far down either one of these roads. We've gotta find something that, uh, that Bridges calls dependent discipline or the discipline of dependence. I'm going to call it codependency. Now, I know the word codependency is a bad thing, right? When we talk about addiction, for example, um, codependency is a bad thing. Codependency is when one person relies solely upon another person to uh, enable them in an addictive situation. So, for example, if there's a person who struggles with alcohol and is addicted to alcohol, codependency would be uh, that person relying on a spouse or a, a child or a neighbor who constantly um, enables them to continue to go down the road of alcoholism by supplying them with what they need, alcohol. Um, but I think there's a sense in which we could understand codependency not as it relates to things like addiction, but as it relates to our spiritual lives as a good thing. In other words, man so submitting himself in reliance upon God to God's ability 
working in him, making him able to do what he does. Uh, recognizing that there is something we are doing, a work that we're called to do, but we are solely reliant upon God to enable us to do that work, whereby then we turn out and do that work. So just as an alcoholic relies upon someone to provide alcohol to them in a codependent situation, we would rely upon God to enable us so that we can be made capable of doing the work he's called us to do. That would be, a, I think, a, an, an okay understanding of codependency. Um, there's an interesting uh, 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 psych psychiatric, I guess, I guess, psychiatric mentality or theory that talks about codependency. And it says that codependency has an excessive reliance upon another person or upon another. I think that's great when it comes to our spirituality. We have an excessive reliance upon God and His and his Holy Spirit and his working within us that we would be fully equipped, fully able to do what he has called us to do. Um, it Maybe instead of calling this thing codependency, maybe what we would call it is actually interdependency. Simultaneous reliance upon God and acceptance of of our responsibility in that work. So going back to the passage that Bridges started with, he said, uh, he sent us to, to um, Psalm 127, right? Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen guard in vain. Um, interestingly enough, you could make two assumptions out of that, actually really four assumptions out of that. Unless the Lord builds the house. Who's the builder? The Lord. The Lord is the builder of the house. He's the one building it. But it's labors, labor in vain. The laborers don't stop laboring just because the Lord is doing the building. Um, the Lord is building the house. But he needs skilled laborers to do the building uh, that he has in his mind. So, in some sense, I suppose the Lord is like the architect, and the church is the builder. Um, the Lord develops the plan, figures out how to make it possible, enables the builders to then go forward in doing the building. In the second part of that, it says, unless the Lord watches the city, right? So, the Lord is the, the, the watcher of the city, but it says the watchmen stand guard. They don't stop standing guard just because the Lord is now watching the city. They still guard the city. And so, um, uh, even though the Lord is a watchman over the city, he, he needs guards to help him keep watch. And so, this is that codependency or this interdependency or this um, uh, discipline of dependency that Bridges is getting at. Well, what does that mean for our lives, for our spiritual growth? Um, uh, Bridges talks about two approaches in this uh, chapter. He talks about a passive approach and he talks about a, a, an active approach. Um, in the passive approach, he says, um, someone would suggest that they're not the one doing the work. The Lord is doing the work. And so we're going to take a passive role in the work. Uh, we're going to be willing to let the Lord move through us or, or, or speak through us, but we're not going to do any work where it comes to this. The Lord is doing all the work. That would be a passive approach. Uh, you know, a more active approach would say that um, I am going to be the one doing the work. And, uh, and, and, you know, really, whether or not the Lord decides to move through me, I'm going to do that work. I'm going to do it of my own strength or ability. Again, we're back to the far, farthest ends of these two things of discipline and dependency. Um, what's a better approach than either the passive or the uh, sort of active approach? Um, on page 127, Bridges uh, suggests this. Um, he suggests something he's calling the faith approach. Uh, and this is the second paragraph, 100, page 127. Um, it says, Man's part is to trust. God's part is to work. The believer can do nothing but trust, while the God in whom he or, she, he or, he or she trusts does the work. Now that's this... That's this um, approach 
that suggests we're unable to do anything. God has to do it. We can't do anything at all. He, Bridges says, listen, um, this approach that I'm able to do nothing, it doesn't stand because uh, both believers and God are needed in order for the work of the church to be completed. It's not that I can do nothing. It's that I can do nothing if God hasn't enabled me to do something. Well, if God has enabled me to do something and then I can do something, I'm still doing something. The Lord is asking me to work for Him. So, I love Bridges' point here. And at the very end of this chapter, um, at page... 138 very end of the chapter page 138 I love this uh, the third paragraph here on page 138 let me read it for you it says remember however that to become holy is to become like the Lord Jesus and he himself said by myself I can do nothing he was completely dependent upon the father and he freely and willingly acknowledged it his dependence was not reluctant it was wholehearted, enthusiastic even, because he knew that we are created to be dependent upon God. So if we want to become holy, we must pursue not a spirit of independence, but a spirit of dependence. And one of the best means God has given us for doing this is the discipline of prayer. I agree wholeheartedly as we are involved in a robust, a rich, a constant prayer life with God our Father. Um, he is particularly appointed. He is well poised to work in us. When we're not in constant fervent prayer with him, and I don't mean prayers in like praying for other people, asking for things. I mean prayers in like having a routine, honest and open conversation with God where you speak to him and he speaks to you. Um, when we're not involved in that kind of conversation with him, how can the Lord uh, better enable us for the work that he's called us to do? How can we be um, aware of the work that he's called us to do? So prayer is the key component that helps us re uh, remain in a dependent relationship with him where we are able and ready to do work as he so makes us able. I want to finish uh, today with just two questions that I thought of. When it comes to this idea of dependency and discipline, the first question goes like this. Are you disciplined enough to depend on God completely? Do you have enough discipline in your life, in your spiritual life especially, to depend completely upon God? It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of work on our part. Um, Bridges talked about how Paul mentioned he had to learn how to become content with God in all situations. It takes a lot of willingness on our part to depend 100% upon God. And so are you disciplined enough to depend completely upon God? That's the first question. The second one is this. Are you depending on God so much that you are both eager and willing for him to both show and teach you discipline? Are you depending upon God so much that you are both eager and willing to have him both show and teach you discipline? Those are two very loaded questions for us. Great questions, I think, for your prayer life this week. I'd encourage you maybe to consider each day this week, beginning or ending your prayer time with God, with these two questions. I'll say them one more time, just in case you want to write them down or uh, you didn't quite get it completely written down the first couple times. Are you disciplined enough to depend upon God alone? And then secondly, are you depending upon God so much that you are eager for God to teach you and show you discipline? I pray you'll have a great week this week. I pray you'll have great conversation with God this week as we continue to learn the discipline of grace. Um, I hope you'll be, just be blessed, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great week.